gonna talk about this, man. I think the last couple of years we've we've uh, I've, I've I've only caught snippets of SNL, and SNL always. I mean, they're not like a, a major political satire, satire show. They're a, a sketch comedy show, and uh, they're a mediocre sketch comedy show at best at this point, right? Like, they've had some pretty legendary people uh, on that show. Uh, Steve Martin, Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, Jim uh, Jim Carrey, Will Ferrell, like D- Daryl Hammond, um, you know uh, Rachel Dratch, Maya Rudolph, Amy Poehler, Tina. F- I mean, uh, the list goes on for but the amount of fucking legendary, amazing people that they've had on that show. But I would say in the last couple of years, they've really dropped the ball on any sort of political satire content. Anything that leans political in any way uh, has been trash. It's been trash. Uh, They tried to, like, last year they tried to satirize. Like, they ignored Tulsi Gabbard for the most part. Um, And then when they did, they made her into Cruella DeVille, which doesn't make any fucking sense. And it goes to show that the writers aren't really paying attention uh, to, to, you know, even the mainstream of the political topics that they talk about. Because the mainstream of the political topic that Tulsi Gabbard was talking about was anti-war stuff. And you can't do anti-war stuff, even in a joking way, on a network like fucking NBC. So, you know, it just... They, they're, they're trash, man. They're trash. And I think the debate sketch and uh, the, the VP debate sketch from uh, the last couple weeks were fucking terrible. They were terrible. Like, I, I, like, they didn't even, you know, like, the maybe the one good joke that they had from the VP debate was, and they, and they kind of did this with the, with the presidential debate, too, uh, oh, I don't, uh, Trump, Trump said something like, I don't, I'm not gonna wear a mask, and I don't see that biting me in the ass later that week, uh, and then they had something in the VP debate where they said, uh, oh, we have the two vice presidential candidates, uh, who these two humans will be the biggest news for the next 24 hours. Or, and it was just like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, you played off of that. And, like, and they did, like, obvious fly references that were memes. Like, they, they, they did memes as jokes. What the fuck? But that's kind of expected, right? Because they're not, they're not really going to... They're not satirists. And they're not really good political comedians on that show. Not anymore, anyway. Uh, I think, you know, during the Bush-Gore era, during, during like, the Clinton era, during Daddy Bush era, like, they were doing some pretty, like, good, hard-hitting political stuff, but Lorne Michaels is a rich guy. Why would a rich guy fucking talk toot to power against people that, that are his, like, friends? And I think part of the thing of like hit, like the whole like hammering the Donald Trump thing is because around close to the election in 2016, Donald Trump hosted SNL. Like they let him fucking host SNL. I hope some people haven't forgotten that because they've they've done some vehemently anti-Trump stuff, but they fucking let him host SNL and they like gave him a bunch of free airtime. Like, it's, that was insane. So, recently Bill Burr hosted SNL, right? And it was like a big dream. Like, every comic that goes on there. I think maybe Dave Chappelle was the only one that didn't go up there and be like, this has been my dream. I think it was my dream when I was fucking 10. And then I grew up and I was like, I don't, fu- don't want to, no. No thanks, I'm good. I've heard enough stories about fucking SNL. So he does his thing, and you know, Bill Burr's Bill Burr. There, there, he talks. Sometimes he talks about some edgy stuff. Sometimes he just he's gonna say some controversial shit because he knows it's controversial shit. It's kind of what he does. It's kind of his thing. And look, I like Bill Burr. Uh, I and to and to be a little bit more frank, I know I've kind of criticized a couple of his. Uh, well, one of his specials. Uh, that kind of took people by storm. He had a black and white special that came out a couple years ago. Uh, best special he's put out. No doubt. 
it was like personal. It hit political uh, topics, sociopolitical topics pretty well. Um, even stuff that I didn't disagree with wasn't like, uh, ooh, what the fuck? Like, why would you say something like that? But he's veered into that, like, wait, why would you say something like that? Territory, right? He's kind of gone into that territory a lot more. So, in the monologue, which is a short monologue, it's like, I don't know, seven, eight minutes, something like that, uh, he opens up with, uh, wear a mask or don't wear a mask, I don't care. If you want to kill grandma, you can kill grandma. We have too many people on this planet. And it's like, okay, cool. Thanks, Edgelord. Like, yeah, like, let's let's talk about just the, decimating the population of the planet. Are there too many people on the planet? Yeah, okay. Maybe we should stop fucking for procreation for a little while, right? Like, there's enough, enough kids that you can adopt if you want to be a parent or whatever. Like, I get it. But, all right. But... He was just like, yeah, kill grandma, whatever, I don't give a shit, whatever, fuck off, like, it's like, hey, do you really want, do you really want this fucking thing to spread around? Because that's the implication right there. You understand that this is an infectious disease, and not just, like, any infectious disease, like, it's one of the most infectious diseases on the planet. So, then he, like, goes on to talk about white women. And he starts trashing white women. And he's done this on the special before. He, he trashed white women. Uh, how they co-opt the movement, right? The, the Black Lives Matter movement, the Defund the Police movement. They co-opted the movement and they threw on their Gucci bags. And it's like, oh, you're not talking about white women. You're talking about rich white women. But you can't say rich white women because now Bill Burr is a little rich. Bill Burr has some money. So he's just going to be edgy and kind of populate everybody. It's like, yeah, there's there's white people as allies to the fucking Black Lives Matter movement. Good. There's a lot of them that are not making it about themselves. The loud ones are. Some of the more ritzy, I need to be in the public eye ones. Sure, yeah. It's misinformation through comedy or for the sake of disparaging a particular group. And it's, I think it's unfair because it's like, no, these movements need allies as well as the core group. You know, like, I think instead of separating each other into this is the, where, like, it's it's this weird separate but equal kind of way of saying, I support the movement, but I'm going to stay here in this little circle. It's like, no, if you want to go to a protest, if you want to, uh, like, share and amplify information, if you want to put your money where your mouth is and, and donate to some, uh, you know, uh, POC groups, some, some POC creative outlets and things of that sort, then then, yeah, go, I highly encourage that sort of stuff. Don't make that about you. Don't make it about, like, look at how great I am. And, and a lot of people aren't doing that. But he just bulks everybody into that. And it's like, what the fuck, man? Are, are we not over this, like, hyper-generalization in comedy? Like, that's the only fucking way that you can make things funny is by hyper-generalizing it. And then he does this, like, hacky fucking premise of, like, oh, June's Gay Pride Month. Oh, I didn't know it was Gay Pride Month. But they got a whole month? It's like, yeah. Oh, black people only got February. They got the coldest, shortest month. And it's like, okay, yeah. But what's it? And he's like, oh, you should give black people June. Okay, they kind of do have that. It's called Juneteenth. Everybody didn't know about fucking Juneteenth until fucking Donald Trump made a big thing out of it with Tulsa. How'd you miss that, Billy B? (laughs) I did a video about it because I was like, not enough people fucking know about this. And Texas approved it as a state holiday. But Congress has not. They have not approved it as a federal holiday. It should easily be a federal holiday. June celebrates the emancipation. Some people call it the second Independence Day. That's in June. 
you could have done that. You could have used the platform of SNL to amplify what Juneteenth was. To amplify how that is a valid holiday that we should all celebrate. Fuck Christopher Columbus Day. Celebrate Juneteenth. It's this very weird, like, let's pit black people against gay people type shit. Uh, Like this weird oppression Olympics type shit. And it's very, very, very annoying. Like, I hate it. I hate the oppression Olympics stuff. I've never cared for it. Um, you know, and that's what that's what he's doing. He's he's like black people should have this month. And how about this? How about this? How about instead of like having to give people a month, how about how about we don't be dicks to people who choose to love who they want to love or have a different skin color than you? How about that? How about we just live our lives that way? How about we don't, like, it's not like we, the the reason why we have to make it a big deal is because we fucked up so many times. (laughs) It's just so tone deaf. So tone deaf. But this is what mainstream comedy ends up being. You know, it ends up being this tone deaf thing and, you know, and then a bunch of fucking open micers will start being like, I want to be like Bill Burr. I want to do that kind of jokes. I'm edgy. It's like, no, Bill Burr's not even being edgy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this content, please make sure you like it. Please make sure you share it. And please make sure you are subscribed to this channel, whether you're watching this on the YouTubes, whether you're watching this on Facebook or uh, or Rockfin, which is the cryptocurrency blockchain platform. It's ad-free and make sure that content creators get paid for the content that they want to make. It's completely uncensored. Whether you're on any of these channels, make sure that you are subscribed and following me for uh, all new video updates. There are uh, videos uh, put up on this channel on a weekly basis, anywhere from four to six videos every single week. Uh, they include uh, news commentary. They include sociopolitical com- comedy commentary, uh, rants, uh, current event stuff, interviews, stand-up comedy clips, There's a ton of stuff that's available on this channel. Uh, And if you want to come see one of my live virtual stand-up comedy shows called the Citizen Revolution Live Virtual Stand-Up Comedy Show, you can grab tickets directly off my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. While you're there, you can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets to these shows uh, uh, and a bunch of cool other uh, bonus stand-up comedy clips uh, while you're at it. And uh, you, or you can make a one-time donation as well uh, if, if that is something that, that you would like to do, if the sustaining membership is something that you can do. I know we're in tough times right now, uh, but if you can, that'd be awesome. If not, that's cool too. But the big thing to do is make sure that you are liking it, you are sharing this, and you are subscribed to the channel. Till next time, thank you so much, and we'll see you on the road.